I represent the voice of organizations that through which youth has expressed themselves. And we, based on the representative democracy model, can speak on their behalf. And I have the mandate to do that. But that doesn't mean that I cover entire youth. Uh, and uh, I'm very conscious uh, of that. But what we have seen in the youth organizations that we work in um, and the young people that we have had contact with, also with others, with other movements that are not necessarily organized, is that young people, despite th them not being the where, not, not, it wasn't their fault in a sense, they did not ne uh, contribute to the creation of the crisis, they are willing, unlike popular opinion says, they are willing to contribute to the solutions. So it's not that they just go like, oh, bad bankers, and you fucked it up, we need to clean up your mess. They say they want to take part. They offer solutions. They are worried that when politicians are talking about youth unemployment, which is obviously the biggest problem that Europe has at the moment, uh, and in some countries way over uh, the acceptable levels, they're not being heard. Young people are not being listened to. Politicians are saying one thing, but they're doing another. Countries say they want growth, but they're cutting culture. They're cutting education. They're cutting uh, support to civil society organizations and to youth organizations. You're cutting what is actually the best investment in a future society. They are claiming that they want to have a knowledge-based society, but they're cutting the, the roots of that knowledge-based society. So that's what worries us a lot. So we need to get out of the paradigm of austerity, uh, but also get out of the paradigm that just saving is gonna be the best way to do it, and that saving on one thing will be is the only thing. In Greece, they didn't cut the military spending. They cut education and healthcare, so that people are now poorer than ever but the military is still doing well. That just doesn't make any sense. I mean, there will always be a mix of things. It's always a mixed bag. It's never clear cut. It's not one answer uh, to everything. It's a very gray area. Why? Because it depends on the viewpoint that you have. It's like, what was first, uh, chicken or the egg? Is it the lack of active citizenship or is it the lack of good politicians that you wanna go and vote? Um, it's always complicated. It's a complex situation. What I do see is that when people feel that it matters, they activate themselves. We've seen that in the crisis. We've seen a lot of protests, a lot of protest waves over the last two, three years. Um, however, that's one extreme moment where you are so fed up that you go out and you just need to go. And then at that moment, you don't necessarily have a plan of how you're gonna change the system the next day. You just go out and express yourself because the only thing left to do is to go and be on the street and claim something. The problem is that, that nobody's listening. In Spain, with all the protests that you had, uh, the Quince MF movement was a great expression of solidarity between people, of coming together, of living up and living democracy. And then what they got in return, they changed the government, they got something even worse, uh, who was just again focused on some partial interest instead of the interests of the many, who was reframing the debate away from economy and away from the bankers taking it all and, and evicted, evictions of people to steering up um, things that were already accepted in the Spanish society, like again putting the, on the question the right to abortion, again putting on the question uh, the civil liberties of LGBTI persons, instead of focusing on the real problems, which is the democratic representation in Spain, uh, the question over the monarchy, uh, all these things. So I see that Scottish example where the participation was so high in the referendum, because where people feel that they have a stake, that they can contribute to change and that their voice is heard, not only that it matters, but it's also heard, they will take part. And for me, it was a long time very difficult to, you know, I'm, on one hand, I'm very political, but I'm not in any political party. And sometimes I, I do face that question when I go to the ballot box, when I see an election in Slovenia and I feel like, 
who the hell should I vote for? It's easy to say, well, they're all the same and I'm not going to go to vote. That's a very common stance in Slovenia where there's a big mistrust into politicians, uh, into the system, um, as it is at the moment. But there are also those who try, you know, and, and this might sound again like a cliche, there are those who try to change the system from within. And again, I take Spain as a reference point because I've seen... Um, and it's not only Spain, it's a lot of other places as well, the energy of people who are very serious about contributing to a change in their society and they are willing to take the step that is needed to be more assertive, which means go into politics. It's not an easy decision. We are old <laughs> as, as Europe and our spirit is very old. For me, that spirit is really... The word spirit captures the different elements of what makes up the body of Europe, in a way. It's the mind, it's the heart, uh, it's the experience, it's the wounds on, your, on the body of Europe from different wars, um, it's the hiccups, it's the, the joys and the sorrows. It's, that, for me, is the spirit. All the trajectory that we had throughout the history, with all the bad things and all the good things together, and coming to a point in our understanding of ourselves and a certain level of humanity that we understand that certain values and principles are universal, certain values and principles are matter, and that certain things trump the others, individual freedoms trump uh, any collective tyranny that we have experienced, that uh, as a woman or as a man, I'm, it's my body and I'm responsible for it and I have a say regardless what the social norms might say. That's the first and um, principal element uh, that we as a collective spirit of Europe think that death penalty is not a good thing, even though some individual parts of that, and sometimes you're so upset that you really think that that would deserve such a severe punishment. As a collective in our mindset, the perception is that that's not okay to do it. Uh, so it's also for me a way of seeing the world um, and therefore, for me, the spirit of Europe that is not necessarily shared by everyone all the time, but if you look at it from the big picture and as a collective, and that collective is a very complex one, because that collective includes Russian history, it includes Ottoman history, it includes part that are not even today part of the European Union and the part that some people would say they don't belong to us. So therefore, the spirit is a very long and very complex one. But I think we can also rejuvenate ourselves. Uh, and we can simply... We are rejuvenating ourselves with recognizing and learning the lessons that we had. Uh, and trying not to repeat the bad things and trying to improve on the good things.